Namo Buddhaya, Namo Amitabhaya. Hello, everyone. So over the past few years, I've received quite a few messages and emails from people around the world telling me that they want to be a monk. Although I'm not an expert in this as I have not yet become a nun, I will for sure. Um, I lived in a temple for almost three years with the Sangha, so I can offer some uh, maybe insightful advice for those who are interested or who don't have access to this kind of information. So first of all, it's very important that about your intention. Why do you want to be a monk? And what's your intention? It's important to set the right intention. If you said you want to be a monk because you want to escape from your current life, you can't face your current life now, you can't deal with your emotions in your maybe conventional life, etc., then this is not a good reason to be a monk. You will face more challenges when you are a monk. So if you can't handle your current life now, if you can't handle your emotions, you can't function properly in your everyday life now, then you know best not to become a monk because you will face more challenges when you become a monk. And you will need to know about how to handle your emotions. You will still need to function properly and to make good relationship with people in the Sangha. So if you think to be a monk is an escape from your current life, right? this is not a good reason. It's not the right intention. And you probably won't do well if you enter into the Sangha. And second, I remember someone told me he wants to be a monk so he can focus on the Dharma as he will receive offerings from others. So it's a good reason that you want to focus on the Dharma. It's a good reason to take the monastic life, but it's not a good reason if you expect offerings from others. Uh, you may or may not receive offerings from other people. How much offering you receive also depends on your blessings, but you should not have this kind of expectation because to take the monastic life is about renunciation. Uh, it's about renouncing your attachment. It's not about expectation or attachment to uh, how much offerings you might receive. Right? If you receive offerings, you'll feel happy. If you don't receive offerings, you won't feel happy. Then this is not a good attitude. Right? This is not the right intention. So you just completely let go of this. Right? Focus on the Dharma, whether you can receive offerings or not. Um, in Dharvaja and Mahayana, uh, there's a bit of difference. I think in Theravada, there is a more of a tradition that the lay people will make offerings to the monks. Like we see in countries like Thailand, uh, people have this custom. They know uh, they will make offerings to the monks. In Mahayana country, uh, like China, of course, lay people also will make offerings to uh, the Sangha. And depending on the temples you are in, uh, some big temple, they receive much, much more offerings than uh, some small temples. So really don't have this expectation. Uh, you don't need to have this expectation about uh, people will make offerings to you. But rest assured that if you are a monk, you don't need to worry about uh, food and clothing. Uh, these are actually taken care of because when Shakyamuni Buddha entered Paranavana, he also uh, promised to give uh, one cent of his blessings to monks, so to the Sangha, so they will never be hungry. Uh, they will never have to worry about uh, food, clothing, all these necessities. Uh, you will have these blessings if you take the monastic life. But how much you have like receive offerings from others, you should not have this expectation. You should not be attached. Whether you have offerings or not, either is good. Your purpose is actually to focus on your Dharma practice. And what is the right intention to be a monk? 
and I talk more from the Mahayana perspective. I uh, in the Mahayana sect. Uh, if you want to be a monk, it's important that you generate bodhicitta. And what does it mean to generate bodhicitta? That is to aspire for the perfect enlightenment, to realize Buddhahood, and also for the benefit of all sentient beings. So it's not just for your own practice. Unlike in the Theravada sect, I when they become monks, they're more focused on their self practice. But in Mahayana, it's different. Right? You practice, yes, you focus on your self practice, but most importantly, you also need to share the Dharma and right? spread the Dharma. So there are a lot of work to do if you have taken the monastic life. Don't think that when you become a monk, you can just cut off. All the communications with the external world. Maybe it's more like that in the Theravada sect, but in Mahayana sect,、uh, you still need to do many many work in order to spread the Dharma, like organizing, like many things in order to spread the Dharma. So、um, I feel in the Mahayana sect, there is definitely more responsibility and duty for monks. As they carry the mission to uphold and to spread the Dharma to as many people as possible, so it's important that one should generate bodhicitta. And when you have bodhicitta, it's like you have momentum, and you have petrol, and you can go very far if you become a monk. And if you don't generate bodhicitta, and you enter into the sangha, you might feel. Again, I'm talking more from the Mahayana perspective. Ah,、uh, you might feel a lot of things you do are meaningless. Ah,、like、you might not sure why you are sweeping the floor. You are told to do all these ah、uh, other things, <laughs> maybe including managing social media accounts, whatever. Right? But if you have generated the unsurpassed bodhicitta, then you know that. Everything you do, whatever trivial thing you do, is for the benefit of all sentient beings. So more people can hear the Dharma. And in that way, you will not feel bored. You will not feel meaningless. Ah, you will feel how everything is actually very meaningful, and you are happy to do everything. So you won't generate so many afflictions if you have bodhicitta. You have this strong determination to help share the Dharma. And you can take on a many many task and duty. If you become a monk in the Pure Land sect, it's important that you spread the name of Amitabha Buddha to as many people as possible. Okay, so once you've set the right intention, next we talk about the more practical steps. You understand why you want to become a monk, and you generate、uh, bodhicitta. Maybe you don't know about. Bodhicitta, yeah. Until you find a master, a good teacher. So it's important that you find a good teacher, a good Buddhist master that you can study under. So at the beginning, I this could be also a little bit challenging. Right? There are also many teachers from many different lineages. So first, you determine what's your lineage, what's the school you're gonna practice. Like me, for me, it's really clear. It's pure land Buddhism for this life, and once I've chosen the path for myself, then I look for the teacher in this school. So I pray to Amitabha Buddha to send me a good teacher, a good master, and Amitabha Buddha chose Master Denshan for me. Like this is actually real. I might share more about it. In the future, about how I encounter Master Denshan, but I feel this is really the arrangement by Amitabha Buddha. So it's important that you find a teacher you can devote yourself wholeheartedly. You have full faith in. You can study under him or her, because the Dharma is very complicated, and the, even the sutras, I、right, even in Pure Land Buddhism, there are also different sutras. Right, it's not easy, and during your practice, you might encounter a lot of questions. So it's important that you have a teacher to guide you along the way, so you won't feel lost or confused on your journey. 
So if you haven't found your teacher in your lineage yet, you can pray to the Buddha and Bodhisattva to help you. Uh, if your heart is sincere, you will meet your teacher. Okay, second is once you found the master, the teacher, it's important that you live in the temple for some time. I think for a minimum of two years. So in China, usually if you want to be a monk or nun, you need to live in the temple for at least one to two years or some even longer. It depends. So this is to see whether you can get used to the monastic life. So do not have any fantasy about monastic life and thinking that you are cut off all your communication with the whole world. Uh, you don't have to do any mundane tasks. Every day you do is just meditation or chanting or studying the sutras. Uh, it's not really like that. Uh, when I first went into the temple, I thought, oh, every day I would just uh, kneel for uh, do Amitabha chanting and study the Pure Land Sutras. But turned out it wasn't the case. Uh, every day I was told to mop the floor, to clean all the toilets, to um, yeah, to do lots of cleaning, gardening, <laughs> many other tasks that they do not seem to be related to the Dharma. But in the end, I knew that these are actually very important uh, foundation trainings to prepare me to uh, study the Dharma. Because actually Dharma is in everything. Right? It's about your heart, your mind. Right? When you do this task, uh, do you have the ego to feel that, oh, you're too good, you shouldn't be told to clean the toilets? When you do this task, do you have the patience? Like, can you do cleaning like all day long? Like, to have the patience and really uh, test my patience, my forbearance, um, and also to feel that actually Buddha nature is in all things. Huh? What's the difference of cleaning the toilet and cleaning the Buddha statue. Uh, it is really about training our mind and uh, not to be attached to whatsoever we do. Uh, and when you have this strong mindset, you have this determination, you have the bodhicitta, you can achieve anything. Uh, you can be successful in everything you do. Uh, I'm grateful that I have this training with Master Desha in the temple, or otherwise, like for me to do all these uh, YouTube videos, I could also give up easily. Uh, if I haven't generated bodhicitta, I don't have this big determination to share the Dharma. And if I haven't had my training of you know, mopping the floor, cleaning the toilet for almost three years, I won't have the patience to uh, keep doing what I'm doing. I, you know, I shoot all the videos, I added all the videos, I added all the subtitles, uh, initially I uploaded everything, so I had to do everything, uh, but now I'm grateful that I have some volunteers that help me to do some works, but still, I'm still doing a lot of work. So it's really important uh, to have this foundation training uh, with your teacher. Your teacher knows what's best for you. Uh, if he's a good teacher, he can see what we can't see. So Master Nisha knew that I used to be a lawyer, I had a few university degrees. So to study the sutras, uh, to understand uh, the words, this is not a problem for me. But it's more about the training for my mind, uh, to have the forbearance, to develop the patience, to develop the bodhicitta. This is much more important than just studying the words in the books. So because the Dharma is not about mere words, it's not about mere talks, it's all about our mind, our heart. Okay, so once you found your master, you lived in a temple for a while, and next very important is to wait for the right causes and conditions. I, I lived in the temple for almost three years. Why I haven't become a nun yet? Because I'm also waiting for my right causes and conditions. I, in my heart, I've already renounced. I'm a nun at heart. Um, but how long I will actually I populate the monastic life also depending on the right causes and conditions. 
Because Master Nenshan said it's not suitable for me to take the monastic life in China because my mission is to share the Pure Land Dharma in the West. So I need to go back to Australia first and to have our own temple or Bodhimanda before I can uh, become a nun. So I'm just waiting for the right courses and conditions. And when will that happen? I don't know. And it doesn't matter. There is no rush. Because to take the monastic life, it's a really big thing in our life. It's like marriage. Uh, you should not rush into marriage. Uh, you should not rush into this important decision in your life. And before I become a nun, I also feel there is still a lot I need to develop. And my practice is still very shallow. So there is no rush for me to become a nun. When the right causes and conditions are here, then everything will just happen naturally. So it's important to be patient, to not to rush into anything. Keep your bodhicitta and also keep this wish that you want to renounce and wait for the right causes and conditions. In the meantime, develop your practice, your patience, your compassion, also develop a mindset of endurance so you can face any challenges and obstacles in life. So you need a lot of blessings to be a monk, to change the monastic life. At first, you can't have a family, or you can't be married. If you were married, you had to divorce. Or you can't have children that you still need to take care of. Maybe your children have already grown up or you don't have children, which is the best. And also, you can't be too old. In a temple, it's not a retirement village. Uh, you can't be over 60. And for Master Renshan, uh, if you want to uh, be a monk, under Master Renshan, usually you have to be young, quite young. Uh, unless, maybe uh, in our temple, we also have some older monks and nuns, uh, but they all send their children, uh, their daughter, their sons to uh, take the monastic life. So you can't be too old because uh, when you are young, you can do much more things. If you take the monastic life, the purpose is also to spread the Dharma. So we need actually more young people to do the work. So it's also possible for Westerners to be a monk and uh, master Ren Shen, um, like Shen Li An. We had Shen Li An from Spain because master Ren Shen happened to open a center in Barcelona and he's from Spain. So now he's a resident monk at our center in Barcelona. Uh, this is what I say, great blessings and with all the right causes and conditions. So I think Shen Li and met Master Zheng Shen uh, earlier than me, or uh, maybe, I don't know, six, seven years ago. And he knew right away that he was his teacher, but he didn't really know how to study under him. So he's learning Chinese now. I think he can speak a very good Chinese now and Master Yin Shan is also learning English. So it's also possible uh, with the right courses and conditions. And I'm still waiting for my right courses and conditions. But like I said, there is no rush. Uh, this is really once in a lifetime uh, decision and I still have a lot I need to develop uh, while I'm waiting for uh, the right timing. And I trust when the right courses and conditions are here, things will happen naturally. So in short, in conclusion, if you want to be a monk, I first uh, set the right intention. Uh, if you want to take the monastic life in the Mahayana sect, uh, you know that you're not just doing this for your own practice, but rather you should generate the unsurpassed bodhicitta to want to realize Buddhahood and also for the benefit of all sentient beings. Second is to find a master under your lineage, your school. And if you can't find a master, you pray for the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas to help you with that. If you are sincere, you will meet your teacher. And third is to live in a temple, maybe your master's temple for some time to really experience uh, the real monastic life for yourself to see if it's right for you, if you can get used to it. And fourth is to be patient and to wait for the right causes and conditions. So I hope this helps. Namo Buddhaya, Namo Amitabhaya.